Well, hey, listen, thank you all so much for coming tonight. We just thought it would be fun to do something a little bit different on our Wednesday night, on our Wednesday night summer with friends. So as Matt and I were talking, we thought, you know what, what if we did some just panel discussions? What are some topics that some people might be interested in finding a little bit more about? And uh, let's kind of uh, pick some, some decent people decent being the key word there we got some ones that are really we got some ones that are really really above par really above par and i'll let y'all decide which ones are decent and which ones are not but anyways good evening my name is drew startup and i'll be your moderator tonight so glad that you have made it i just had to do something formal right but, uh, but listen, tonight we asked uh, for our panel discussion about apologetics, which is defending your faith. We've asked Brian Anderson and Tiffany Mears and Brian Holland, the brain, and Matt Knight, um, the Alabama, I don't know, I, I was waiting for somebody to say something, yeah, the Alabama guy <clears throat> to join us. And, uh, and by no means are any of us experts at apologetics, right? By no means. Um, for yourself. But, I, okay, I'm not an expert at apologetics, I'll just tell you that. But I do want to just share just a couple of things uh, with you. Uh, here's just a basic definition of what apologetics is. Um, it's simply presenting a reasonable defense for the Christian faith. And there's a lot of different, a lot of different areas of apologetics that I'll get into here in just a minute. And we only have 30 minutes, so we're not going to be able to deep dive into some of these topics um, but we will be able to cover some of these questions. But here's what the Bible has commanded us to do. The Bible has commanded us to be ready to give an answer, right? And so 1 Peter 3.15, this would probably be the verse that would kind of uh, promote the apologetic part of our faith. And here's what it says. It says this, But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord, and always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But then there's a second part to that that says, but do this with gentleness and respect. And so one of the things that we are commanded to do is, is as Christians, y'all, we've got to know what we believe, right? We need to know what we believe. We need to know why we believe it, but we also need to know how to, to explain it to somebody or share your faith with somebody or even how to give an answer. And here's the truth. We won't know the answer to every question that people will give to, uh, that people ask us. Um, but there are some things that we do need to know. But uh, Peter was very clear in saying, but here, when we give an answer, we're not to do it in a way of, hey, we know better than you because it's going to shut people down. It says do it with gentleness and respect. But here's some of the common topics that you might hear in apologetics. I just wrote down, uh, I think these are the, the top seven or eight questions uh, that people ask when it comes to faith. One is, how can we know for sure that God exists? How can we know that the Bible we have today is a reliable recording of the original writings? Uh, why would a good God allow suffering to exist? I think we all have asked that question at some point. How can a loving God send people to hell? Do all religions ultimately point to the same God? What extra biblical evidence is there that Jesus existed as a historical person, like a real person? Um, or how are the books in the Bible selected? What is intelligent design? Some of those. So those are examples of questions that people ask that are dealing with apologetics. So tonight, we're going to do more of just some general questions, and then I'm going to give them a chance to be able to maybe go down a rabbit hole, rabbit trail here and there, just to help you better understand some of this stuff. But here's the first question that I'm going to pose to our awesome panel. And panel, here is the first question. Don't fight over the mics. Just be kind. If the Bible is the source we look to for our spiritual guidance, how can we know for sure that the Bible is a reliable source? So who'd like to get us started on that? Um, I'll go quick, and I'll see if this will go quick. Um, all right, so first of all, you know, we're taught in apologetics, too, that there's a standard that you have to follow when you follow evidence. So I wrote down some things to, to, so I would, wouldn't forget because I am the oldest person on this panel. Um, first of all, that we know that looking through time, we also know that, that the Hebrew language is the oldest, the oldest mass-produced language in the entire world. Um, and so we have written copies of manuscripts um, uh, supplemented by the Dead Sea Scrolls of the Masoretic Jews 
a standardized this since the early 200s. Um, we also have the Septuagint, which is the, the Greek translation of these of, the, of these things, writing the, the Targums, the, the Pentateuch, the Talmud. We all have all these for the Old Testament. We have those in writing, and, and we can pretty solid that these are the things that that God has in tune. And then, um, and I want to give some numbers real quick because I wanted to read this out because I thought this was phenomenal. That um, we're talking about ri- written manuscripts. That um, Plato, we have seven um, actual written. Um, Aristotle, 49. Uh, Caesar, we have 10 manuscripts that he written. The Tacitus, the Roman uh, philosopher, we have 20. Homer was 2,000. It seems like a lot. For the New Testament, we have 6,000 plus that's written in Greek, um, plus 24,000 written and translated into other languages. So we have written documentation mm-hmm. from that time. <coughs> but there's three things that you want to ask. First of all, the bibliography of, of what we're reading. That's what that is, that idea of where this was written and, and in context of that book. The second, if I'm going over the time, y'all have to, the second. You're good, you're good. I'm second, the moderator. This internal, this internal, what does these, what do these books, what does this Bible say about itself internally? Of course, not only is the unerring word, but this is the story that God's intended for all creation. Um, and then finally, externally, is how does this book evolve, evolve around the real world of world events? And mm-hmm. it is a Part of it's a history book of things that happen. I know I'm hurrying, but it happens. So you can, you can find reliable sources with um, other scholars, other secular scholars that match with the history of the Bible too. So you can see this is a, re- a reliable written word document that we can that we can count on confidently when we go find our you know, find or defend uh, our faith. That's awesome. No, that's great because that that's one of the things that that a lot of people you've got to have not just the, the evidence of, of just the 6,000, 24,000, but you've got to have other historical texts that back it up, and there are many, many that back it up. Who else has something to add as far as the Bible being a reliable source? Why why can we do that? Go ahead, Brian. Uh, quickly, uh, for me, it's the uniqueness of the Bible. So if you, if you look at any other work, it doesn't matter if it's secular, religious, anything that has ever been written by man, nothing even approaches the unique nature of the Bible. And, and in this... It took 1,600 years to write the entirety of the Bible. Just mm. think about that. 1,600 years. It took 40 different authors, somewhere around 40. And out of those 40, most of them didn't know each other. Some of them had not even read the other works. None of this was done chronologically. So for 1,600 years, 40 different people wrote 66 books, but there were a lot of other books written at the same time. We didn't know which ones were which. The Holy Spirit then came in somewhere around the first century, moving on into 500 A.D., and they took all these books written over thousands of years, and the Holy Spirit said this one, this one, this one, and over just a period of a few hundred years, they put it together in what we call the canon, the Bible that you can hold in your hand. But here's the most amazing part. For 1,600 years, as culture changed, as language changed, as society changed, the same moral code, the same story of forgiveness, the same God and description of God, the same God that loves us, talked about man and his sin and how he'd fallen away, but he could come home, and he had made a way for him to do that. And the idea that no one culture could do this, no one person could, it was 1,600 years. And then when you put it all together like a jigsaw puzzle, and then you step back, you're like, this tells one story. Right. How could that be possible mm-hmm. for 1,600 years with 40 different authors, 66 books that didn't even necessarily know each other, and it tells the single story of God's grace for man? To me, that's impossible. Right. That can't be done. So for me, that's its most heavy basis of authority for me. I love it. Tiffany, Matt, y'all got anything to add to that? <laughs> Matt, you got anything? No. Okay. <laughs> So, so just think about that. When, when you think about what we open up on Sunday, what you open up during the week as you go to the source, no other book, no, no other historical book or anything has the backing, has the uniqueness that the Bible has. That's why we can with confidence say that we believe this book because of how it was put together, how God weaved it together. Um, to allow these things to come together and make sense. And then you compare it to other historical texts, and the same stories are being told in the background, right? And so that is just such a neat thing. So that's that's just a small but a great overview of why is the Bible a reliable 
source. So I'm going to go into the next question. And you may have, uh, have had somebody say this to you before. Um, and you might have been stumped and going, I don't know what to say. Or, or you may have given a response. But maybe you've encountered somebody that says, you know what? I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. So, panel, if someone were to come up to you and say, I don't believe in God, how would you handle that situation? Or maybe what, what evidence would you uh, choose to give that person that says, so tell me, why, why do you believe in God? How can you? What would you say to that? I think ultimately, I mean, it's going to, life comes down to faith. So my belief in the creator and the God of the Bible comes down to what I'm going to put my faith in. And so, like, if we verified the Bible like these guys just did, then I'm going to put my faith in that. And the Bible says that God is real and he exists and that he loves me. But ultimately, it's going to come down to what you put your faith in. And, like, I, I don't believe in atheists. And that's maybe a funny statement to some people. But, like, to say there is no God is an absolute statement. So you would have to have absolute knowledge to make an absolute statement. And no one that I know of knows everything. So maybe an agnostic, I don't know if there's a God, but the atheist, I just, I can't see a person saying with confidence, I know so much about the world and everything in it that absolutely nowhere in it is there a God. So I think that is kind of where I've rested on that, that I, I could come to terms with maybe if you say, I don't know if there's a God, but I don't think a person can really truthfully say there is no God. Okay. What you got, Matt? I think this is a, I mean, anytime you get a question like this, or really any question about God, um, it provides a great opportunity because, one, they're already thinking about it. Yeah, you've already walked. You've already and started that. that. that you've already exactly. And so, really, my first step would not be to say anything other than to ask them, why? Well, well, why do you believe that? Because there's going to be something, something that has happened in their past, something that they've read. There's going to be something that has led them down that path. It's really hard to go, well, here's why I think there's a God, because if you, if you, unless you know where they're coming from. So really, that's, that's the first step, is to try and figure out more about them. And the nice thing is, everybody wants to give you your, their opinion. That's right. Um, that's true. It, if you, if you ask somebody, hey, do you believe in God? Hey, do you go to church? They're going to tell you. They're going to be happy to tell you because they've got an opinion. They, they, they have something that they want to share because it's their thoughts. Um, and so if you begin to ask some of those questions, you know, well, why, why don't you believe in God? Well, why, you know, why don't you believe in the Bible? Why, why this? Why that? Then you can start to break down into the smaller pieces of what it is that is causing their hang up. And it may be some of those questions that you sure. read earlier, whether, you know, I, I just don't believe that a good God could send people to hell. Well, we can break that down. We can yeah. have a discussion about why that is and and talk through that. But you got to start somewhere. You can't just be like, I don't believe there's a God, and then know where to go from there. You have to continue to ask questions. Yeah. Ryan A. Okay, so they hit perfect. I even wrote down almost exactly what Matt said. But um, in training, you know, we're taught this idea of immediate action drill you go through, think you think of every scenario and you try to figure out what you're going to do immediately when someone does something that shocks you. Um, one of the first things you learn is that you got to figure out where the enemy is firing from, right? So <clears throat> here, here's the thing is that apologetics isn't about not only defending your faith. It's not, a lot of people think apologetics is arguing mm -hmm. within an argument, but you're not. Right. I said, so, and what you said is absolutely true. You've already wanted to, they're already asking. Uh, the first thing I always do is, was there ever, as I ask, was there ever a time that you did believe in God? Mm. That gives them the opportunity to answer. And when they, and this goes to what Matt just said, when they answer, well, yeah, when I was a kid or when this, well, what made you stop believing in God? Because now you're taking, of course you're taking an interest in their life and you're being sincere and you're doing exactly what we're called to do. But this allows them to open up to you because then you find out why they believe these things, what happened. And, and you're able to kind of help them see through that, you know, these are choices that they made. Maybe it made it from a, from a moment in their own you know, broken heart or something. But you got to get this to where they see where they come from. And so you can see where they're firing from. That's a great idea. Great thought. And I think, too, um, a vital tool that everyone has. I know, I know when you start thinking about this, it gets scary because you're like, I don't know that much about the Bible. You know, I don't know. I don't have the answer to some of these questions. So how do I defend that? Um, to that, 
I would say nobody can argue with what you've experienced. Nobody can argue with what God has done in your life and what you have seen and what you have experienced. And that is where you can start. You don't have to know a whole lot about the Bible, but you know yourself. You know what you've been through. You know what God has done for you. And they can't argue against that because it happened to you. Right. Good place to start. Yeah. In my um, in college in personal evangelism, that was our professor's starting point of the whole class. It's like you're you know you're going to experience things in this class where we're going to ask you to get out of your comfort zone and talk to people and they might have questions and you can argue all day with people about what they believe about creation or what they believe about which Bible translation or what they believe about you know anything. Yeah. And, but apologetics is not supposed to be an argument. But like Matt said, so the, our first assignment in that class was to write out our testimony, a three-minute version, a five-minute version, a seven-minute version, a 12-minute version. And, like, it caused us, number one, to examine our relationship with Christ. Like, do I have a before and an after that I could tell somebody about? And then it gave you your most valuable tool in apologetics is yeah. your testimony. No one can come up to you and say, well, God didn't save you. you that's your that's experience. Right. They're not yeah. going to downplay that, you know. So that's definitely, I would say, your number one starting testimony. point. I think the, my favorite lead, and I, I did it by nature when I read that, my nature reaction is I didn't either. Yeah. You know, somebody tells me I don't believe in God, and I was like, man, I didn't either. Because <laughs> I, I did. I love I it, yeah. I don't when I say, hey, you want to start a conversation? You're like, yeah, me either, man. I didn't. And they're like, well, what happened? Well, we like this. <laughs> so it's just, that's not being disingenuous. I, I, mean, I didn't. I remember when I didn't. I yeah. Mean, very truthful. And they, they that I'm being real with them, mm -hmm. and then that opens the door to exactly what Matt was saying, what Brian and she was saying. So it's it's just how you find your lead with a person, but be honest. You know, don't don't act like you know everything. Just be that's easy right. going about it, and be honest and truthful, and then just tell them your story. You know, if nothing else. And, and that goes to that. If you ever understood or been one by teaching this idea of the shepherd counselor, that whole thing of um, you better be sincere and you better be truthful because yeah. you're opening it up very deep dark hole that you're going to fall into so make sure you got the time make sure you've got the proper mindset that hey listen i'm going to open up myself and let this person open up to me and we're going to have this divine moment um because you need to be serious about because this is a chance to actually do god's work and i love that idea and, it, and uh, apologetics briefly is not evangelism no. it's right. pre-evangelism yeah. so you're removing obstacles but remember if you're in one of these conversations where they're like i don't believe in god and you feel like you're in an apologetic moment like what we're talking about your goal is not necessarily to see them say if you do that's great but most of the time you're removing obstacles from their faith somebody later down the road it might be their mom it might be somebody at school it might be 10 years later will will harvest that all you're doing is removing maybe one obstacle that day don't feel like you got to run the whole race that day so just reminding you this is not evangelism it's pre-evangelism the, those are all such good points. One of the things that um, that I like to do is people, uh, to, for me to be able to get more background information on a person, I, I like to, as soon as they, if they made a statement like that, the first thing that I would do, well, tell me about that, because that will give me more insight into how I need to direct that conversation. Um, and it's not, it might not be just one conversation, right? It might be the first of several conversations that God allows you to have. If it's a coworker, if it's somebody at school, students, whatever it might be, somebody on your team, it might be just the first of several conversations. And that's, I think, one of the misconceptions and sometimes where Christians freeze up and going, man, I need, to, I need to be able to have the answer and I need to give it right then and the whole thing right then. No, it might just be just the start of something. And so that was such good info. Matt? And if you don't know what to say, just keep asking questions. Yeah. Let them talk. Because eventually, <laughs> eventually you'll, you'll, you'll be able to pick on something. You'll be able to pick out something that you can talk about. Um, and if you're just like, I don't know what to say, Keep asking questions. Keep asking questions, and, and eventually you'll get to that point. The Holy Spirit will get you that, to that point. Rome wasn't built in a day. Mm -hmm. was, you know, so it takes time. And their heartbreak and their, their disillusionment wasn't built in a day. So it, it takes time to unwind a lot of that. Yeah. So you got to let – and they'll come to – look, everyone – if they're talking to you about it, they're never coming seeking God anyway. So. Well, and that's a great, great lead-in into our next question, which is this. A lot of times, somebody might ask you a question, and guess what? You don't know. You don't know the answer, and that's okay. It's okay. So here's the question to the panel. If someone were to ask you a question, and you don't know the answer, how do you go about handling that situation? Run! You, yeah. <laughs> Run! No, I mean, 
mean, it, <laughs> step one, I don't know the answer to that question, um, but I'll find out. I mean, it's that simple. You, They don't want an answer that's wrong. You don't want to give them an answer that's wrong. You don't want to give them just fluff because they're going to see through that. That's right. If you yep. don't know something, be honest about it. Be like, you know, that's a good question. I've never really thought about that. Let me look into that, and I'll come back to you. It's that simple, and, you know, you may even could, again, ask questions, see if you can dig a little deeper into what they're really wanting. Um, but, man, there's a lot of stuff I don't know. And, you know, if that question comes up, I'm like, well, that's a good question. Let me go talk to Brian Holland, and we'll find <laughs> out. This is not a fake it till you make it situation. That's right. That's right. You know, that I have, because uh, I was thinking about this, I was like, man, Google's great. I said, but Brian, uh, Brian Holland, Greg Powell, Drew, Tiffany, there's a lot of people in this church that have a lot of scholarly knowledge. And there's people who turn to and go, hey, look, yes, yeah, you too, stuff. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, say, but, but we'll go to what they're saying is, is not only say, hey, listen, uh, let me look into this. Look into it and get back to them. Yeah. Follow up. Because you, you've been, you got a little bite. You got a little nibble, man. You, you know, show them some, some earnest love and, and actually discuss it, figure it out, and bring it back and go, hey, this is what I found out and this is where I found it. Maybe you send an email with some scripture or some things that support that or, or do a whole email. Take take a whole evening is what I do. If somebody ever comes at me and I didn't know it, you're going to get back a small dissertation. Yeah. <laughs> because not, not so much for you, but with citations and everything, right? Footnotes, uh, I mean, all that. Ask, yeah. That means I need to know. Yeah, right? that's right. If, they, if God brought me somebody that need to know something, I need to, I need to figure it and, out. And that question might be for you, not them. Sure. I mean, because that's a good point, too. Yeah, and you and I always want to get at least six or eight scriptures because I like to overload just to say, okay, not this is what this is, this is what this is. Okay, because I need to make sure. I'm so scared of saying saying something that's not scriptural. Mm -hmm. I always try to find as much scripture I can to back it and, and not manipulate the scripture to say what I think. And I think Brian made a very good point. Um, when, that Brian, sorry. Oh, um, yeah. When he said that <laughs> it needs to be done with love. Um, if you go into this, wanting to win an argument, you've already lost. Um, if you go into this wanting to be right, you've already lost. If your goal is to see somebody eventually potentially come to know Jesus right, because yeah. you love them, then yeah. you're going to be okay. Um, but people can also tell if you're just trying to argue with them or trying to be right. And so love them. Build a relationship with them. If they, if even even outside of the, the the realm of apologetics, like get to know them. If they if they're asking you these questions, then hopefully you've got a relationship with them, a friendship with them that you can engage even outside of the apologetics realm. Because people listen to people that love them, and so you will have a better chance of helping them to see what's true if they know that. I think, too, like in your answer, in your response to them, don't be arrogant, like because sometimes we're prideful in our knowledge that we know so much. Humility, you know? humility. And so I think yeah. When, yeah. We, when we are confronted with something that we don't know everything about, be honest, like they've said, because in, you know, First Peter, it does talk about being respectful and being honest is a part of that. So I think it's okay to acknowledge, hey, I didn't know that. That's right. You, know, yeah. you don't have to know everything. Nobody expects you to know everything. So I think just being honest with the people who are reaching out to us is going to gain their trust, you know, and it's going to help develop that relationship, hopefully, that you have with them. Because people can see if you're lying. Yeah. I mean, they're they're going to spot it. Yeah, go ahead. So hold on to that thought. Do you think that it, you think you should, as your time is uh, maybe even being patterned, show them something? Well, this is where I feel in my life. This is where God helped me to understand this. This is my belief. This is what I believe. Yeah. This is what I believe. This is what I believe. I like that. Yeah. So, you know, kind of some sympathetic say listen because I, I, I struggle too like Brian said you know we we weren't always believers we weren't always you know I, I grew up in church and I didn't believe God was later in my teens and late teens I was like I don't know what this is I don't know what's going on here I think one of the keys in what they said um, was what if somebody asked you a question that it could actually help you grow in your faith I mean that's happened to me a lot to where somebody asked something spiritual and I, I've been on the wrong side of it going I should know this, and so I'm going to make up an answer, you know, like, and so that was, that was way back, though, you know, way back when I was really confident in myself, and I'm not as, the older I get, the less, you know, but anyways, God works on that. So like, so like two weeks ago? <laughs> Maybe, Matt, don't reveal all that, but, but here's the thing is that people, think about this, the people that you're attracted to are genuine people, or raw people, or, or authentic people that just don't mind 
that, that, that don't think they know everything. And so when you're able to, to disarm them and just go, let's just have a conversation, then they're so much more willing to listen to what you have to say. But I mean, God can really work your heart on a topic that you don't know about. And so take advantage of that opportunity to be able to look at that. So we just have just a few minutes left. And so one of the, the, the last questions that I really want to ask is simply this. There's so many resources out there to help with different questions about your faith and what if somebody asks this. Um, so what I want to ask you about is what resources do you know about that some of these folks go, hey, I've got somebody at my work, I've got somebody at school or on my team, uh, somebody in my class that, um, that is asking me questions, where can we go? His name is Brian Collins. No, <laughs> and his and number is? I've got a list, actually. <laughs> Well, and here's what else we can do, Brian, is that we are going to, we're recording this, and so we'll be able to post this on our Facebook page. So underneath, we can make a link, and we can make a list of some of those things you can go back and look at. Yeah. Um, if you're give us a couple, Brian. What are a couple, well, just if you don't mind giving a couple. This actually on Apologetics, and it, it was a textbook. And oh, he brought the book. He brought the book. The book. But the reason I like this one is it's so accessible, right? You don't have to be in seminary to use this one way the chapters are laid out it's not dry and dusty like some of the classical apologetics books this one's one you could use like 10 years later be like oh they were asking about creation. what's the name of it it's uh, when skeptics ask okay and uh the Giesler brooks okay so I, but I've, I've got all these up here but this one's awesome right and i've got several others like i said one of them's a video on um irreducible complexity bacterial fl flagellum and, and, and how all these I'm talking about science, man. I'm talking about science. And this is why you can love Brian Holland. You can, you can just watch <laughs> Can't even say those, those words. Free, so. I like the design. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. So, anyway, come up after, and I'll, I'll give you all these resources. Good. There's, awesome. What you got, Brian? I want to plug a few, because um, we did, a, we did a, uh, uh, um, a class here called uh, Cold Case uh, Christianity. Um, it was amazing. Um, the author is a guy named uh, Jay uh, Wallace Warner. He has another book called uh, A Person of Interest. And, and they're great reads. It's a more of an analytical look at um, evidential truths to, to who Jesus is, to your faith too. But there's also, if you're into podcasts or anything like that, there's a podcast called Apologetics 315. It's episodic. It's great. I mean, if that's kind of even what you want to do is to, like, hear something. There's this guy sitting around, you know, talking about apologetics and about their faith and stuff. It's, it's actually very good too. Um, but there's also a guy named Avoca. Now, here, here, this is more for the generation. It's called, his name's Avoca Malone. I didn't even hear what that said. He's a he's a, he's a street, he's a street apologetic, and he's got a he's got a book called Street Level Apologetics. But um, but he, he's he's real good too. So uh, look him up on the web too. Um, and ReasonableTheology.org is a good website too if you want. To ReasonableTheology.org. What you got, um, Tiffany? A simple one is GotQuestions.org. Yes, very There's good. A lot, and you can read their statement of faith. It pretty much. You'll find if you type in on Google something along these lines that that one's is going to be your, probably one. your most yeah. answer. And then I like. Um, uh, they're not really apologists, but um, the Perrys, Jackie Hill Perry and Preston Perry, um, they have a YouTube channel, and I think that they do like 30 minutes with the Perrys, um, and they cover all kinds of different things. But then Preston on his Instagram also has Bold TV, and he goes out um, and speaks with people of different faith and has conversations with them. Um, so those are some. And then also Lee Strobel, The Case for Christ, yep. is very good. So those are just a couple. Well, and, and awesome. one apologetics but it's just it's filled with scriptural knowledge um, it's called the Bible project um, they do illustrated descriptions very of very of good Bible. yes it's got a lot of really good information and so um, if uh, you know and they're interesting so yeah. you know if you're like I can't sit there and read an article but I could sit there and watch a seven minute video well then this is for you oh, uh, it, it's not apologetics but it kind of is one of the books that I've got up here I wanted to remind everybody too it might pique your interest it's called what's the difference and it's like a, a four page thing about what do seventh day adventists believe what do mormons believe what and it's written from an evangelical christian perspective mm -hmm. and it's not attacking it's just saying here's the difference here's what they think about the trinity here's what they think about creation here's like a comparison about, right. like and this. it's really yeah. easy and you can just flip through it and if somebody's like what do mormons think you just flip to that book and i mean it's, it's thin it's a paperback and you get it for like four bucks on amazon but i've, I've got that one in reference to it um, awesome 
30 more seconds. Go ahead, Matt. We're almost out of time. Um, but with, with, with apologetics especially, um, we will, you'll, you'll never get those questions unless you're living a life that radiates Christ. That's true. Um, we, uh, Tiffany and mine, um, our small group um, that we're a part of, we, we've been doing this study that I talked about on Sunday, um, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. And this past, this past one that we looked at, talked about the reason why the table is in the middle of our of, of our enemies is because we need them to see God's radiance reflected off of us. Scripture tells us that. And so if you want questions to be asked of you, you have to live differently. You have to look differently. Um, it's important that our lives radiate the glory of Christ in everything that we do because then people look at us and go, well, they're different. Why don't they say the things that we do? Why don't they do the things that we do? And it's in those moments that you're able to have some of those conversations. Well, listen, I hope that you've enjoyed this tonight. It's just been 30 minutes of just been able to ask some questions. And so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to do three more of these. The next one on June 15th is going to be called The Culture vs. God. And basically it's going to be some different topics and go, what does the culture say or believe about this? And then what does the Bible say about this? So we're really looking forward to that. 